Hey, what is up guys? David Zhao here. I've got some camera accessories here, so you know what that means. Episode 2 of 5 Under 50, the series where we look at 5 photo video accessories, each under $50. Let's check them out. As usual, if you're interested in any of the accessories I talked about today or are curious about the gear I use to film these YouTube videos, links to everything in the description down below. All right, accessory number one, starting off with something that is absolutely a must have for any photographer or videographer, quick release plates. Now, there are many different systems out there, but I personally love the Manfrotto RC2 quick release system. I was first introduced to the system uh, when I got my Manfrotto B-Free tripod, which came with a ball head that had the RC2 quick release adapter. If you're not familiar with what a quick release system can do for you, let me illustrate. If you find yourself often taking your camera off your tripod, do some handheld shooting, then back onto your tripod, or even throw your camera on and off a gimbal a lot, then a quick release system will do wonders for your setup and teardown time. Personally, all my ball heads and my main gimbal have one of these RC2 quick release adapters attached to them, and every one of my camera bodies has an accompanying 200PL quick release plate screwed in. Now, if you want an entry-level tripod ball head with this system, I recommend the Manfrotto 490 center ball head, which comes with an RC2 quick release system and a 200PL plate. That'll run you about $50. If you want to add this quick release system to something like your gimbal, I recommend the Manfrotto 323 RC2 quick release adapter plus plate, which will also run you about $50. If you're just looking for extra 200PL plates that match the RC2 system, maybe you have two or three cameras but only like one gimbal or one tripod, well then you can pick up these individually for just $27. Accessory number two, speaking of mounting things and unmounting things, have you acquired a bunch of camera equipment that's mounted with these slotted thumb screws? Find that you constantly have to use your keys or find a quarter to tighten them? Well, I have, and it's really frustrating when you realize you don't have anything around you to use to tighten it. This is doubly so if you're traveling or out and about at a shoot and you just feel silly because now your camera is loosely mounted to your gimbal plate all because you didn't have a quarter on you. Well, then you need yourself one of these doohickeys. No, literally, this brand calls this thing a doohickey, which I thought was pretty funny. Basically, find yourself any cheap, affordable multi-tool that has a flathead screwdriver feature, preferably one with a hole, or even better, a carabiner, so that way you can clip it onto your camera bag and just forget about it. This way, if you ever need to tighten one of those plates again, you just grab this nice little multi-tool that costs you like five bucks, and you never feel like a fool again. Accessory number three. This one was actually sent to me by the company that makes them, Nova Stella. They sent me their 13 watt, 1300 lumen RGB smart LED light bulbs. And my first thought was, they better not flicker. And based on my tests, they don't. Kind of, with a key light. Uh, I shot both at 4K 24 frames per second and at 4K 120 frames per second, and I didn't notice much, if any, flickering at all in my images. But, Hold your horses. You might be wondering why I'm talking about a smart light bulb in a camera accessory video. Well, here's the thing. I've always loved using smart home tech and I've always hated using Philip Hue bulbs. And that's because of two reasons. One, they always flickered so I couldn't have them on while I was shooting videos. And two, they're like nine watt bulbs, which means they're not that bright. You know, a light bulb that doesn't give off enough light. Great. But with these, they're 1300 lumen and don't flicker. Would I say use these as your key lights and for professional shoots? No, absolutely not. But they can work as great practical lights and accent lights in your videos, and they work great as just everyday light bulbs. Alexa, turn on the office lights. Kind of the perfect crossover for a YouTuber, like during the day while I'm working, they're just on and I, when I start filming, I can actually just incorporate them into my shots. I know that a lot of photographers use things like pocket RGB video lights and they produce a lot of light and are very color accurate, but they usually also require charging and that's one more thing to make sure is properly set up before you actually start filming your videos. So having like practical lights that are RGB, that work, I love it. So that's why I made it onto my list for today. If you're into smart home tech like I am, I definitely think this is worth checking out. You can get one bulb for $25 or a pack of three for about 60 bucks. Accessory number four. You might have debated whether or not you wanted to drop anywhere between 50 to $300 on a single variable ND filter and considered 
wow, do I need to buy like two, three, or even four of these filters so I can have one for each of my lenses? To that, I say no. Every lens uses some standard filter size. So like, for example, some of my lenses are 67 millimeters, others are 77, and my largest one is 82 millimeter filter thread size. Instead of buying a variable ND filter at each of those sizes, buy just the largest filter you need, in my case, the 82 millimeter, and then get a set of step-up rings. This allows you to adapt bigger filters to a smaller lens. Now, with one variable ND filter and a set of step-up rings, I can use that filter on any of my lenses. The cheapest option would be something like this set of newer step-up rings, which I like to call the step-up cones, since it gives you every filter size you need, but you have to stack it until you get to the proper amount of stepping up to the size you need. So these are very affordable and really great to start with. However, as you can tell, if you're adapting a large filter to a very small lens, you're gonna have this super long cone that at worst can affect your image quality and at best just makes your setup larger and more annoying to use. But the benefit, however, is the price. You can get a whole set of these for just $15. The better option, in my opinion, is to buy a specific step-up ring for each lens. For me, I bought a 67 to 82 for my Sony 24 GM and a 77 to 82 for my Sony 85 GM and on and on. This is the more expensive option since each ring will run you about 10 to $15, but you get the most compact setup this way. Accessory number five. Finally, I mentioned this in my Sony a7S III unboxing video, but I'm going to mention it again. Buy a screen protector for your camera. It's about $8 for a pack of three protectors. At best, it saves you a costly repair bill when you accidentally scratch your LCD screen because your keys were in your camera bag and they shifted into the wrong compartment somehow and now you have a scratched up LCD. At worst, you spend $8 and a few years from now when you go to resell your camera, you take that screen protector off and your LCD is like brand new. That, that's all I really have to say about screen protectors. It's, it's, it's just really common to just get a screen protector. If you don't have a screen protector on your camera, LCD, right now, go get a screen protector. Do it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed episode two of Five Under 50. Again, if you wanna grab any of the accessories I talked about, links will be in the description down below. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more content just like this, and get notified when new videos are released. Let me know in the comment section down below which one of these accessories you're gonna buy or what accessory I should mention in the next episode of this series. All right guys, that's it for this one. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.